Hey gang, Mel here. So in this video, I want to show you how to do the magnifying glass map effect in ScreenFlow. Okay, so in a previous post, we showed you how to create this magnifying glass effect over like a map. So it would be this type of an effect here where we basically have a map and, um, and you have a magnifying glass. And as it goes across, you can then see how the, uh, the map magnifies underneath the magnifying glass. So it's a nice little metaphor to kind of show the different areas where you might want to be paying, have the, your learner or your, vi your viewers pay attention to. So this is something that we can do easily. We're going to actually do it in two passes. The first pass, we're going to do something like this. And we're going to create this in, um, you know, this is just basically a screenshot that I grabbed from Google. But we're going to create a shape over this and we're going to animate that shape. And then what we're going to do is we're going to punch a hole through that shape such that when we punch that hole, all right, we're going to see an underlying graphic underneath that. So this is actually going to be two layers. The first layer is this map that you're looking at here. But then within this little hole inside the magnifying glass, we're going to be revealing another scaled up map that then gets revealed through that hole, so to speak, okay? And then the third step is just basically overlaying this magnifying glass metaphor over that hole, so that way we give a little bit more definition to that hole, as well as uh, completing the metaphor that we want in terms of paying attention to a specific area, all right? That's basically what we're gonna do here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. Let's go ahead and bring up my ScreenFlow application here. All right, so here's what we're looking at. Here's a canvas viewer, and then here's our timeline. And as you can kind of see in the timeline, we have two tracks already here, but in ScreenFlow, you can add many, many more tracks as well. So one of the first things we're gonna do in order to complete this effect is we're gonna create this video here that I showed you earlier. Okay, it's gonna be basically this one graphic and then a, another graphic that is a colored, um, a colored uh, circle, okay, I'm overlaying that, uh, that map graphic. So the first thing, let's go ahead and bring our map graphic in. And so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a media that I've already did a screenshot. You can see it's just basically a JPEG image. And all that image is, is just a screenshot that I grabbed from Google Maps, where I think what I'm showing here is point A is Knott's Berry Farm in Anaheim, California. And then, little known fact, Disneyland, this is Disneyland Park in Anaheim, California. They're really just almost right around the corner from each other, okay? Now over that, we're gonna bring in that, that red uh, circle. And so we, our graphic is actually real scrunched over in the, little, in the left corner here. So let's just go ahead and scale the timeline up just a little bit here. And you can see that graphic actually spans about five seconds duration, all right? So let's say right at about the one second mark, and we're gonna go from one second to two seconds. So it's gonna be this, um, this one second duration, okay, where we're going to animate this, uh, this graphic. So we're going to go ahead and bring in a, uh, a circle graphic. So we'll add the annotations clip here and then pick the color, the, uh, the circle graphic, and then sh push the shift button and then drag out the circle that we want. By pushing the shift button, all we're doing is being able to create a nice perfect circle. Now, just a little tip for if any ScreenFlow or Telestream folks that are listening or watching this video right now, here's, a, here's what I'd love to be able to have, by the way. Okay, doing a little digression here. See how I can click this solid filled in square area here, and then when I click and drag, I have a nice square that's filled in for me already. The problem is I can't see a way to do that with a circle. So how come, uh, so, um, just something. So if there's some, any uh, ScreenFlow folks or Telestream folks that are uh, watching this video, please put a comment below and just let me know how to do that in, uh, in this application. And if not, then just let me know and I'll uh, go ahead and put in an enhancement request. All right. What we're going to do here instead is do a workaround with the thickness of the border area. So I'm going to bring that thickness all the way up so that way it just fills in that little middle area there. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of the shadow because it's just extraneous stuff in there. I'm also going to get rid of the outline as well. All right. So now we've got a little circle. So all we need to do now is take this circle and in the timeline be able to animate it so it comes down to that dog leg and then also over time have it come over to uh, Disneyland, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take in the timeline with that annotation selected, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it so it fills that whole section there, okay? That whole five second segment. All right, so now it's at the one second point is where we wanna start the animation that takes it from there down to the dog leg, all right? So we'll start it at A and then we'll come over here to the video properties while we have the uh, graphic selected and we'll just click add video action and then bring the start point of that action over to where our playhead is at the one second point. And that defines where we want it to start. 
So now what we want to do is take the playhead, bring it over to the end of that action, and then define where we want it, where we want that graphic to end. Now we want to have it animate over that second dog leg. So what we're going to do is use this animation that we've already created. We'll just go ahead and copy that. And with that as a starting point where the playhead is, I'm just going to go ahead and paste right into that so you can see that that video action now essentially is going to span another one second point after where the playhead is. All right. Except now what we want to do is define the, a new ending point and that ending point is going to be where Disneyland is. All right. So that's basically it. All right. So here's what our animation looks like. It goes from there, then down there. So it's a one continuous stream. So we click and very nice. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just basically going to push this out and create what's called what I call a reference video. All right, so let me go ahead and do that and I will see you when this is done. Okay, I'm back. I just completed the, uh, the export of that reference movie. So what we're going to do now is we actually don't need this project anymore. This is the one we use to create the reference movie. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that. And in ScreenFlow, we're just going to create a new project, a new, new empty document. And in that document, we'll make it the same size as the last one, which is going to be our HD video. And then over here in the media bin, what we're going to do now is import that reference movie. All right, so we'll just go down here to add media and then find where our reference movie is. There it is, so I named it Magnification Reference Movie. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and open that puppy up. And there it is, add that to the timeline scrubber. And it spans about five seconds, so again, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in or scale up our timeline here, and you can see our movie lasts about five seconds here. All right, so now what we need to do is punch a hole in this. And as you can see, behind that reference movie, there's nothing, it's just basically blank space. So we will know we're successful with punching a hole if we can make the black space that's really right behind it um, of the canvas reveal through that where the red is okay but here's how we're going to punch that hole through that red that red graphic so with that gra with that movie selected we're going to go to the visual properties come down to these video filters and we're going to add a filter called chroma key now you can see that the software screenflow has just basically tried to take its first guess in terms of what colors to make transparent you can kind of see that it took a little grayscale kind of a thing here so what we need to do is educate it and so we'll click this color box right over here that brings up a little refined key and what we're going to do is just basically click the, the shape that has the color in it originally that we want to remove so we'll click it right there and then that tells uh, ScreenFlow that it's sort of this this um, spectrum of red okay it takes a, its best guess of that red and then it creates a little spectrum called the tolerance around that very specific red color and it sort of creates this palette here and it says anything in this map that sort of matches that we're going to go ahead and try to punch a hole through and indeed check this out look what it did it tried punching a hole through it's going to try to punch a hole through these other areas as well where the uh, where we had the freeways and the heavy road maps and so on. So what you can do is you can actually modify that with this tolerance um, setting down here. So if we bump that down just a little bit and we tell it that we want to have less tolerance around this color that we had told it to punch a hole through, then you can kind of see that uh, it's trying to more refinely get to that original red color and it gives us back those freeway maps or those freeway roads. Let's click off so that basically then sets that for us. Now we do have that hole because essentially what we're doing is through this little uh, this, this uh, circle shape we're revealing the black color that's behind this. Now what we're going to do is behind this graphic we're going to make another copy of this graphic and what we want to do is reveal that graphic through this hole such that it's magnified. So the very simple thing is we're just going to put another graphic behind here which in the timeline will appear as track one which is going to be underneath this uh, this track here okay and we're going to put that graphic there and then scale it up all right so here's what we're going to do we'll come back over here and we'll find that same graphic that we use here which was this small scale JPEG that I was a screenshot from Google Maps and we'll just drag it down to the timeline here all right so now you can kind of see that I've got two things going on here here's the underlying graphic and here's the one that's on top all right so you see how that circle is kind of moving around in there okay and then if you grab the the background there right underneath it that's the other one okay that's the one that's behind it or underneath it depending on if you're looking in the canvas viewer or in the timeline okay so now what we're going to do is basically take this one that's behind and we want to scale it up so that way it has the effect of being magnified within this circle all right so all we're going to do is just uh, come over here with that bottom one selected we'll come over to the video properties come up to the top where we have the scale function and maybe zoom it up to about 200 percent 218 percent okay so there so now we have that very nice in there okay now here's the thing that we have so we basically completed that effect essentially 
But what we now have to do is sort of sync everything up because you can kind of see that just because we have the hole there and that hole is really animating, it might not really be animating in the right places. So now what we have to do is actually position the underlying graphic, the scaled up graphic, and we need to animate that. Okay? Follow me here? All right, so what we're going to do is we're animating this one underneath it such that at the start point of that one second point where we know that the circle starts to move, we're going to take that underlying graphic and sort of align it. We want it to start right about there. Such that as we come along to that two second point in the timeline and that hole starts moving down to the dog leg, well then in the underlying graphic we want to have the correct dog leg kind of show in there as well. So that implies that we're really moving this underlying graphic over that time span. So we need to animate it. Okay. So let's come back to that one second point and let's define a little um, a video action for the underlying graphic. So I'm going to select it here in the timeline on track one, come over to video properties and do an add video action. And we'll define the start point of that video action to be right about there. That looks right. That looks about right to me. It's called the TLAR method. T-L-A-R. That looks about right. Okay, so there we are. Now we'll go ahead and advance forward in the timeline, have the hole come down to about that two second point, and it's trying to be at that dog leg. So we want to define this video action to end at that two second point and define it to be right about where the dog leg is and sort of align it. There we go. So let's see what that looks like. So it starts at Knott's Berry Farm and over the one second duration comes down to that dog leg. Good. Now we need to animate the second dog leg, right? So and now as it comes over, you see we kind of lose Disneyland, right? So what we're going to do is take this, copy that guy, and then paste it right back into itself. Or you could have simply defined a new animation, uh, video animation there, and then come back over here. That's a start point. We like where that start point is for this next uh, video action. What we can do now is come over to the right side, and then we just need to adjust where we want it to end. All right. Good. All right. So now let's take a look at that. So we start here. Click the play button. All right. Very nice. So see how that applies. All we need to do now is essentially then complete the metaphor with the magnifying glass. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can find a nice little magnifying glass. So here at Digital Know How, my online course for teaching how to create online courses and how-to videos, very compelling way using uh, Camtasia for Macintosh, Camtasia Studio, and very soon we're also going to be adding ScreenFlow in there as well. Uh, so anyway, you can take that out, check that out by going to digitalknowhow.com with the dashes in there. Okay, see how I did that? A little soft sell. Anyway, right in there, there's a little. Uh, we have the royalty-free media under resources. And one of the resources I like is uh, uh, there's several in here, but you can go to a site like Photolia where you can do a search for these different, uh, you know, for different graphics. Or the other one that I also have an account with is Presenter Media. Okay, so if we go there, I'm already logged in. Let's go ahead and search for magnifying glass. All right, so here's the different magnifying glass effects that we have. Don't like this because I need something that's transparent that'll that allow me to show the background through the hole, and that's not going to work for me. I have to do some extra work on that one to sort of delete or to remove that little middle. What is that? Like a little DNA strand or something like that. So we'll go ahead into page two. Take a look at that here. Perfect. This one looks good to me. It looks like a nice little graphic. And if we can make it transparent, so inside that, the middle of that magnifying glass, we can have some transparency. That would be even better. And indeed, we do. Check this out. The little checkerboard here kind of is telling us that we do have some transparency there. And just a little tip in case you're kind of new to, uh, to graphic files and so on. The file format that you typically want to have where you have some transparency as a color in the in the graphic is a PNG, a portable network graphics file. Okay, So if you have something like that, that's really what you want to have. If you use a JPEG, you won't get the transparency with a JPEG type file. Okay, so we've saved it down. Now what I want to do is go in there and bring that graphic into my media bin. So bring that magnifying glass graphic. There it is. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the timeline. So what I want to do here is make this hole, this, this magnifying portion, match the little hole that we have in the original graphic. So I'm going to push the shift button and then grab a corner of that magnifying glass and try to just basically fit it in and scale it. Let's go scale up a little bit here. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to scale the canvas up and down. All right, so there. That looks, looks about right. It's T-Lar, right? That looks about right. Okay, so we got that all set, and uh, looks like I've got the nice, uh, the nice 
scaling there that I want to have. Let's look at what the scale of that is. So that magnifying glass, we've scaled it down to 64%. And here's the X and Y position of it here. And all we're going to do is do the same thing. We want to animate now also this magnif magnifying glass, all right? So that way it basically just follows the hole around, okay? So essentially, right about this point in the timeline and then this point in the timeline, we want to create a couple of animations on the magnifying glass track itself so that way it matches the hole. That's all we really need to do. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fast forward a little bit. I'm going to take these two animations here and just do a control click. So I select them both. I'm going to copy them both, go over to my magnifying glass track, right click, and choose paste and it glues those uh, animations right in there. Now it still might not be perfect, so we have to do a little adjustment here. So let's see how this goes. So we already know that's a good starting point, and the playhead is at the starting point of that animation. So we'll come over and notice how the, uh, the magnifying glass is sort of taking its own mind in terms of where it wants to be and how big it wants to be. But luckily, we already knew that it was at 64%. That's why we checked that earlier. So I'm just going to change that to 64%. So essentially, I'm telling uh, ScreenFlow to say that magnifying glass should be at 64% when it starts. And then by the time it gets to this point in the animation, it should still be at 64%. That means it shouldn't change, okay? Except for, at this point, I also want to change the X and Y position so it matches right where this hole is, okay? So we're going to bring it right over the top of that. So here's what it looks like. So it starts there, and the magnifying class does that by the, by the time we get to the end of that animation. Now we need to fix this animation here, so we'll define that good as a starting point, obviously. But by the end, the time we get to this thing, we want to remove the single-mindedness of this magnifying glass and want to continue to do its own thing. So we bring it back down to 64%, and we say by the end of that point in the timeline on that animation, we want to be aligned with the circle wherever the circle is. We want it to be here, all right? Do a little refinement here with the little arrow buttons on my keyboard. Uh, but basically, here's the effect that we have here where we now have the magnifying glass map effect. And let me go ahead and render this out, and I'll show you what that looks like. So there's our final magnifying glass effect. Bring that up, just go ahead and push a play button. And there we have it. All right, so if this is your first time here and you like more of this stuff, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're finding me on YouTube uh, and push the like button if you're on YouTube as well. And if you hit me on my website, push the, uh, go ahead and make sure you sign up, hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to learn more of this stuff, Go ahead and visit us over at digitalknowhow.com. Put the dashes in there as well, and uh, you can find out a little bit more about the course. See you all next time. Take care.